whole 2023's redemption, bro. Like, last year, everybody tapped into that fucking money pool and fucked me over. It kept taking from me, taking from me. Not literal sense of money, but from me as a person. They took my kindness for weakness. And this year is, is going to be a different story, man. Like The All-Star app, the number one app in the business. UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. First thing I want to start with is uh, the sponsorship deal, man, you got for this year, for 2023. It's, 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 to me, it's huge because it's like Flex Wheeler. Like, that's a big name in the industry. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about that, how that came together. Um, my last fight last year in April... I met him at Boston Pro Show in February or March. It was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I talked to him. He thought I was going on stage because of my size. But at the time, that was right after my men in field fight. And then I put on some weight. So I guess it was more so like the ability, like my possibilities and like the potential that I had. Mm -hmm. I reached out to him after the show. And then, boom, he's like, listen. I like to sponsor you as an athlete, you know? I can help you develop. I can help you, like, physically become better than what you are. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him, I was like, no, nah, I'm not. At first, I was like, no, nah, I'm not interested because I know what it is that happens. He's like, no, 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 no. You can stay natural. You don't need to use anything to, for me to be this size naturally. He's like, it's insane. He's like, it's insane. He's like, you have no idea the gift you have. I was like, all right. And from there, that's when it launched off. Damn, that's crazy, man. That's crazy that Flex, you know, like to, to <laughs> me, like as a kid, you know, you hear, you've heard that name, you know what I mean? In the 90s, 2000s, you know, whenever, just he's, uh, that's major, man. So working with him, you know, what have you seen that's, you know, that's different? Just my, well, like following a better diet, him checking in on me like every two weeks or every week, it depends on how he's feeling. Like he'll be on me every week, but he's uh, he checks in on me every two weeks. He hits me up like, yo, I need the updates. He hits me with the the my diet, my lifting routine, my cardio and stuff. And then when stuff plateau or if we're not moving anywhere, he'll make adjustments. So I was like two fifty one my last fight. I'm down two twenty now, about two twenty, two twenty two, two twenty, two twenty two right now. So it's been grinding and grinding and having fun, but also like retaining my strength. Today I got like a 545 squat, um, a 560, was it 560 or 585 deadlift and a 425 bench. But I know I could have went up higher in the bench. So, you know, I just didn't want to because right now I'm depleted. I don't have enough carbs in my system to like, energize my muscles and shit so i'm like it's too close to a fight so we'll just leave it at that so after the fight when i eat rice and carbs and stuff again or more of it then we'll see where we're at in the past when you were cutting down to to fight did you did you feel like you were losing the strength you were losing you were depleted like you felt that and now it's different. yeah yeah i ain't gonna lie i i would i go into this mode in my head where if something's not broken like why fix it? So what's the point of changing what it was? I would just go on like egg whites and broccoli and overtrain and get down my weight to like about two two twenty five ish or lower. The lowest I've ever been was like two thirteen. So that's what happened. But now I'm actually eating and staying down and I feel crazy. Like I, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, you're you're a professional fighter. You also have the the personal training thing that you do on the side. What other occupations do you have? Do you have other jobs? Because you're a busy man. <laughs> I mean, I do a little personal training on the side. Like, I I'm trying to get more into that, more focused into that. I work at Amazon as a delivery driver. Wow. And then, like, of course life you know my personal life i take care of and stuff like that and sometimes i'll fix cars here and there come I'm, I'm a mechanic i know how to fix cars build cars fix them and sell them so and just those those little things 
Damn, I didn't know that. That that's a interesting tidbit about you. You can fix cars. You know, not many people can fix cars nowadays because it's all like oh, man, wires love, and shit. Yeah, I love cars, man. Like mm-hmm. that's 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 life. That's why I don't like these hybrids and these damn freaking battery powered cars. It's like, oh, what is this? <laughs> Well, they're not doing to- so well right now, right? They're like crashing into each other and blowing up and overheating and shit. So the life choices, man. Them. It's yeah. the future. Life choices. I'm just waiting on the cars to fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we all are. We all are waiting for that. Um, the Amazon thing. Like, do they know that you fight, or do you just kind of sneak in there, do your work, and you get out of there? Man, no they they know, man. And then like <laughs> they know. They know. Even customers know, man. I'll deliver a package. They'll be like, wait a minute. I know who you are, but I know you don't. <laughs> they know who I am. They're like, some that don't know who I am, they'd be like, man, you don't you don't look like you're a driver. They, you're doing something else. And I'm like, well, like, well, he's like, bro, look at your freaking arms. Look at your legs. Like, how you see all that through my Amazon freaking, my, my freaking clothes? He's like, bro, what, what do you do? I'm like, I'm, I'm a fighter. He's like, I fucking knew it. Like, I run into customers, even on the streets. I'll be sitting there delivering. People, like, pull up on me. Like, Yo, guy, got a picture. Shit's crazy. I'm not even going to lie. It's just crazy. I like that. That's cool that, you know, people come up to you while you're working and, and, and pay respect. Because that's what they're doing, basically, is they're paying respect to, to you know, your, uh, your occupation. Because that's not a normal job. Yeah, they're always like, yo, you're doing wonders for CT, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm like, I got this, man. Cause my last two fights weren't so, like, good on my end. I was taking two, I took two last-minute fights after being sick. I just gained weight and couldn't cut weight. One fight, my body shut down. My kidneys were about to, like, my shit shut down. One fight. Then the second fight, I was just like, yo, I ain't going to make weight. I got to stay at heavyweight. And that's not my weight. So I think I've done my best work in the training aspect of cutting down and grinding, like, and making 205 and the mind, like, getting in the cage, knowing what I went through to get here. It, it's like, it, like, fucking feeds my hunger to win. And in the last two fights, I lost a heavyweight. And then people are talking shit. Like, I saved two fight cards, bro. Like, Devin Clark and um, Grisham. Their opponents fell off, and I jumped in last minute. And these people shit on me like they forgot that I fight light heavyweight and never had an issue making weight when I know a fight's coming up. They forgot that I fought Alonzo Menonfield. They forgot that I fought Fabio Chiron. They forgot that I fought fucking Alexa Kammer. They forgot that I fought Cody Brundage. Like, the list goes on. They forgot I fought these dudes at light heavyweight. And these, some of these dudes were undefeated and supposed to destroy me. Monsters. They forgot at 205 what kind of person I am. But I'm going to remind them February 18th. There you go, man. February 18th. You know, it's been it's been a while. It's been around 10 months, man, between fights. And, you know, did you feel like you needed that time away? It seems like you took advantage of that time. Yeah, I took advantage of it, but I also lost a lot of family members, man. I lost my grandmother, and grandfather, and a cousin, a few couple friends that were close to me. I lost, I lost about seven people back to back, and that it was fucking with me mentally. Cause I'm like, I went from talking to someone a couple years ago about how I never lost no loved ones or anyone close to me, to last year losing them back to back. Like losing my grandfather, then a month later, my grandmother, and then two weeks later, somebody that I worked with for 15 years, and then another person that I lived next to for 11 years, like a guy who fucking gives donuts and shit to my kids, and that been I, he's giving me furniture. I've been in his house. We talked, fixed cars, do oil changes. Like These people aren't just people. Like These are people outside of what I do that knew me before I did what I do. So 2016 is when I started even fighting as an amateur. These people know me 10 plus years. So it's like, damn, seven people back to back. And it just kept hitting me. And I was at funeral after funeral after funeral. And I'm just sitting here like, wow, it's crazy. That and, then, um, that and like, I don't give a fuck. Cause I'll speak on it. That and then a bunch of people close to me 
people that I trusted with my heart, with my soul, sat here and fucked up my personal life, my personal relationships, the whole nine. Like people talking about me, like spreading fuckery about me. It's all this this whole 2023 is redemption, bro. Like last year, everybody tapped into that fucking money pool and fucked me over. They kept taking from me, taking from me. Not literal sense of money, but from me as a person. They took my kindness for weakness. And this year is, is going to be a different story, man. Like for real. And I, and I know this is an interview. This is going to be out there. And I hope they all hear this, yo. You guys are some fucked up people and karma's coming. Yeah, man. It's it's a year of, uh, I guess you got to shed the skin of the past year, you know, and, and all the, the, the roadblocks, you know what I mean, that you have to overcome. And now you got this fight. What do you think of the matchup, man? It's a good matchup. Man, I, yeah, it's a good matchup. I mean, I get to display my striking because I hate uh, I, I can wrestle. I could do that shit. But the last time I wrestled, like the last time I took a loss was Dong, actually, at light heavyweight in April. Not last year, but the year before. But people forget that I had COVID. And right off COVID, they flew me out to fight this dude. For three weeks, I didn't train. I was still recovering from COVID. And you got champs. And fucking top 15 dudes being pussy because they had COVID. And six, seven months later, they want to start getting back in the cage. And I was back in the cage three weeks later, bro. They don't put none of that in consideration. Like, I'm like, yo, bro, I just went in there with a dog. Dude, that had to lose, bro. He just took his loss against Justin Jacoby, actually. And it was like, you sit here and look at that shit. Like, bro, I jumped in there with a dog. I had no idea who the fuck he was, nothing. They just offered it, and I was like, yeah, let's go. I'll be off of, I should be off of COVID restrictions by then. Two weeks, no training. I couldn't see no one. And then that week they flew me out is when I got the most training that I could get in. And I still made weight, still made 205, still went out there and went three rounds with a dude who was knocking everybody the fuck out. And I sat there and weathered the storm. But they don't see that, bro. They only see this dude that, oh, he's such a big, powerful guy, and he lost. Nah, man, there's way more to it than a physicality, brother. It's a mental game. Dudes would gave up in those positions that I was in. I broke my nose in the first minute of the round. My shit was bleeding for 14 minutes, blood everywhere. I was I was getting fucked up. But I was looking, digging deep to try to finish this guy. I didn't give up. I didn't sit there and let him get the W. Like, I, I he had to take that shit from me. And these dudes don't get it, bro. Like, the mindset. All they talk about is that I lost. They don't see what I went through, the fucking hurdles that I went through to get there, and how the fuck I saved a third fight. I saved that fight, too. His opponent dropped off, and I saved that fight. So at the end of the day, fuck the naysayers, man. I, I fuck with my fans. I have respect for my fans. I love my fans. I love the people who actually believe in me. I love the ones that come to my page to actually support me, not just come to watch and talk shit. Like, it's 50-50. And to be honest, if I didn't have these haters, yeah, that means I'm doing something wrong, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. The supporters are the supporters. Mm. I, don't re I don't reward expectations. Expectations are people who love you are going to show you love. That's just, it's imbued. So it's like you sit there and really think about it. Like your loved ones are going to show you love. Your fans are going to show you love. But your haters are going to keep it real with you, bro. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep it real. They keep me they keep me afloat. Like my boat will not sail without these haters, bro. And all it is is my boat sails because of my haters. And my engine is running because of my fans, bro. My support. So fuck them. I win no matter what. Yeah, haters are basically supporters, just in a yeah. different way. You know, <laughs> that's what it is. They're the ones that watch your every move. Yeah. Yeah. For real, they do. They do. And, you know, it's it's crazy, like, how in this sport, especially, you know, in, in all sports, they they expect perfection. And then at the, on top of that, they have, like, really short memories. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, you dug into that, right? You know, you, people don't. They don't understand like what it takes to to get to the cage. You know what I mean? They what don't. Into, That's why you know? I, Yeah, they don't. That's why they're the ones on the couch watching. Like at the end of the day, you know how many people are telling me to work on my grappling? Bro, 
Y'all forgot what I did all amateur in the beginning of pro? I would take people down and fucking maul them and beat the shit out of them. I tried to switch it up something different because listening to the haters. Oh, he doesn't have striking. What if he didn't have wrestling? And now it's back to, oh, you need to work on your wrestling. You need to work on your jujitsu. You forgot I was a double L champion, state open champion, New England champ. You forgot I went into the the jujitsu world and fucking destroyed everyone at damn near every tournament. How I many belts I got for jujitsu? Do you know how much times I went to Nagas and destroyed four or five men in the same period? Do, do doing double divisions. I'm I'm going in a two twenty and a heavyweight. I just finished a match and I'm on the mat again, walking over after finishing the match to fucking submit another human being. They forgot that was me. That was me that did that shit. So don't sit here and talk about, I need to work my grappling and wrestling. Oh, you're going to get to the higher level. In my mind, I'm at my highest level. And guess what? All because I feel like I'm at my highest level doesn't make there's doesn't mean that there's not room to improve. I'm improving every day. So let them talk, man. That's all they can do. Nobody talking will come to my gym and say, let's go live rounds right now. Everything goes. Let's go. Three rounds right now. Nobody. All they do is talk. Nobody. That's that's real talk. <laughs> no one's gonna step into the gym with you, man. That's that's definitely not gonna happen. Um, man, you talk about redemption. You know, you talk. Hey, redemption is always always great to see. This performance coming up, man. I'm excited, man. You got me hyped on on like what to expect. Like, what should we expect, man? explosive movements and just me man the old gritty me the 2019 version that monster trust me anyone that looks up anything about me in 2019 well after the first contender series and before that that was a gritty motherfucker i just didn't give a fuck that 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 version of me is here there you go man february 18th ufc fight night in las vegas go in the descriptions download the all-star app william knight man it's always good catching up with you thank you so much for the time Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Shout out to my people. You know, shout out Flex Wheeler, Thornton's Mixed Martial Arts and Fitness. I've been at the same gym since I started. So many people like change your gym to get better. What you people don't realize is you can go to any gym you want. But if this thing right here doesn't improve, if this fucking thing right here doesn't pass these barriers, that mental barrier, those breakthroughs don't happen up here. You're going to remain the same, man. And I'm telling you, I broke through. I fucking broke through. I don't know. I felt I felt crazy when I broke through. And now I'm ready, bro. Cut down to 30. I cut 31 pounds down, bro. You think I'm not ready? Let's go. <laughs> fucking let's go.